Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition where we are still watching Twitch uh, content essentially, a uh, Twitch video from a couple weeks ago now at this point. Um, and so I've edited out, you know, kind of downtime and stuff because the vibe's a little bit different. Um, just a little more relaxed and also my audio was a little messed up as I mentioned in the last video and the game is much louder than me so i'm trying to consolidate things and get through this stuff as quickly as possible so thank you for your understanding and the video will start in a moment for the game's like you have a main mission you know i'm like yes that's why i'm doing all these side missions oh gases are done nice and we're almost halfway with everything else those, not even close. Ooh, almost done with Prothean. Oh, we're almost done with the Sari stuff, too. And we're really close to Turian. Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. More Cerberus. That dang nab Cerberus. Oh, it's so crazy how they just... Like, oh, I love the links between 1 and 2, like the little tidbits of Cerberus that you get in one and then all of a sudden and you're like oh they're bad and then you get thrown into them in two is just it's really interesting and we do our best to like confound them in this one and then in the next one they're like hey can you help us out and I'm like yo what <laughs> I destroyed a bunch of your facilities <laughs> in the last game location head to Nephron. Nephron in the Columbia system of the Voyager cluster. On it. Voyager? Right, more than ever you got tenure at 16 and they don't live much past 40. Yeah, a uh, 50 year old Solarian, which I think Morden is, is neither in his 50s or about to be in his 50s, um, is quite old. But 40 is kind of your average lifespan for them, but they sleep much less than we do. They're awake much more. And they kind of operate at a faster speed. I hope I'm in the right place. Oh, let's bring Liara and uh, Ashley. No tech skills whatsoever. Don't need them. chance she's related ravens related to an elf named talon i do like me some simple like two syllable word like names that are like you know that like aren't just like you know bob or or, or ashley like these like names that are like uh, that have like a, a very apparent meaning to them i'm a big fan big fan Maybe, uh, maybe in some alternate reality or in the far distant reaches of space where Dragon Age exists in Mass Effect, uh, somehow, someway, they are related somehow. You say that though, but in my personal canon, Erika, my main and my canon Inquisitor, and Talon, my second Inquisitor, are related. They're brother and sister from the same planet. Which works, because neither one of them have very elfy, elfy names, like very elven names, which is sort of... I usually try to go, like, like to fit a name, like, to pick a name that fits within, like, the race I'm in, you know? Like, like has a meaning within that race. But, uh, I was feeling very sentimental about Mass Effect when I played Dragon Age Inquisition for the first time. So, Erika, I don't, I don't know how, I don't say this very often, but Erika is actually the name of Thane's first wife. Um, I'm trying to find whatever this is. <laughs> um, there it is. I thought it was a structure, but it's not. It's a ooh, okay, I remember this, yeah. Oh, I 
Erica is Bane's first wife. Who died? 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 Cerberus soldier had an e identification tag for Captain Verisynth, one of the Salarian soldiers responsible for capturing the League of One. It's unclear how he came into possession of this relic. So yeah, that's a tag, which is, they're more rare. Um, but yeah, and Talon, I came up with that one because I was going to make him and uh, not an acolyte, but I thought I thought the uh, the Valison it chose for him was Fallons, Fallon or Fallondins. Um, uh, what is it called? Valisling, but I think I actually chose Dirthamins on accident. But now I can't change it. So it looks weird. I had sort of downloaded and I actually did play enough of it I will I, I, I played a sith sorceress and I played enough of it to unlock the ability to uh, unlock chiss the rate the chiss race and I paid 10 bucks for it and then I didn't play again um, so I need to I need to do that I need to play that one again the morning was pretty, well, the morning was chill extensively, but really it was me trying to figure out what I'd done to my Mass Effect, or to my Dragon Age Keep stuff. Holy cow, I didn't realize that sniper was scoping on me. Distracted by the melee button. Oh my gosh, I hate this game so much. I hate it. <laughs> oh, got him. Nice. You cautiously press a few buttons and an alarm chimes. The optical database is flashing, is flashing itself. Quickly, you copy as many files as you can to your hard suit's internal computer. It's memory wiped, the computer shuts down. The files are sure to be encrypted, but you've got time to crack them. We've got encrypted files. Um. I actually don't remember what that was. Was that part? Was that Hades dogs? I think it was. There was, there was something about a Cerberus facility that we needed to take out. Um. Whoa! Oh, dang. Well, and then what I'll do is I'll do these two, probably go to Vermeer, and then I think we st I'm 90% sure we still have time to like run around and pick up these if we want to do that. We have, because there's one more planet after Vermeer. I, Ios, Eos, I can't remember the name. I think Eos is an Andromeda planet. Maroon Sea Cluster. Oh. Transmission coming in, Commander. I think you're going to want to hear this one. Greetings, Commander Shepard. I represent a party interested in obtaining information oh, that's, on Cerberus we picked up those. We picked up those things that said archive the data, and I was like, aren't I supposed to give this to somebody? Who are you, and who do you represent? Who I am is inconsequential. Suffice to say, I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. You see, Admiral Kahoku contacted my employer looking for information on the location of any Cerberus facilities. We provided that information on the promise that he would turn over copies of all files gathered from the Cerberus systems to us. 
Did you have anything to do with Admiral Kahoku ending up dead? We had no reason to harm him. He was going to provide us with information about Cerberus. Information that is now in your possession. You must have some connection to Cerberus. How else could you tell Kahoku where to find them? Information is our business, Commander. Through our contacts, we were able to determine that the Cerberus group was active in the Voyager cluster. Ilos, thank you, Ilos. That is why we are so interested in acquiring copies of the files. Oh, from you. yeah, no, Lej, that makes sense. That, uh, yeah, once you've done it once, it's enough. I think that's how it was with Mass Effect 1. They don't have the DLC included here. What is it? Something, st Arcturus Station or something? It was one of those, it was the DLC that lets you do, like, waves of enemies or whatever like as like a simulator practice on a station and i remember i did it once and i was like that's enough i'm good I'm, and it's an expansion or the dlc and i was like yeah that's good i'm good <laughs> i don't need to these are classified alliance files i'm not handing them over to you be reasonable commander cerberus was operating outside alliance jurisdiction you don't owe them any loyalty the Alliance is just going to file this information away in some archive, but no secret stays hidden forever. Eventually, someone somewhere will deliver it into our hands. Might as well be you. Transmit the files to us and you will be well compensated. What are you going to do with this information? Information is a commodity. It can be bought, sold, or traded. Why my employer desires this information is not my concern. I am only the buyer. My loyalty is to the Alliance, not the Shadow Broker. That is unfortunate, Commander. My employer will remember this the next time you need something from us. Yeah, well, eventually I'm taking down your entire system and replacing it, so... Boo on you. <laughs> it probably would have been more reasonable to give him the files, but at the same time, it's like, oh, you know, someone eventually is gonna do it somewhere. And I'm like, that doesn't mean I should do it. It's like, it's like that whole thing where she, like earlier with the sorry woman on Ovaria, she's like, she's like, oh, well, you think they don't spy on corporate, you know, like rivals? And I was like, doesn't mean I should do it. Like, doesn't mean the, the, and for this shepherd, the, the, the means don't justify the ends. I think I, I said it like purposely, like, you just like the ends don't justify the means, but like she, she's like she just told Garrus right like personal honor like as far as you can take it you know it, without hurting other people necessarily is is very important you know so it's like oh well yeah eventually you'll get it so I guess I'll give it to you and get compensated like no she's not gonna do that Jessica ooh it's a large but low density world By with a nitrogen flow, this, this slender band of habitable terrain allows limited colonization by humans. Chaska's ring is unique and appears to be, for lack of a better term, a massive piece of alien insulation art. The rings are made of small pieces of synthetic material and are almost invisible from space. From the ground, the catch scatter the light of Matana on picturesque ways. It is not known who created the ring or when. It's in very early development. Information is being collated on native hazards and ecology while a mass massive colonist recruiting drive is gearing it back on Earth. And it seems silly. You have such a narrow band to live on. And you're like, oh yeah, we're definitely going to get people out here. I'm like, but you don't have anywhere you can expand to, really. Oh, is this the one? No, did we already do that one? Oh yeah, this is the investigate samples and we get here to this nice, beautiful green planet where they're like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna get a big colonization effort going, and then we're gonna come up over, like, a mountainy, craggy area and drop down into a big old valley that's full of those stupid Thorian creeper mm, husk things. Like, look, look at it, they're making me go all the way down this mountain. I can't even see where I'm sliding to. <laughs> Here we go. But I'm here for it. I'm a geologist in disguise. Eh, no. Let's run around. We don't have a ground vehicle. 
This is the one with the creepers. Yeah, I kind of messed up the approach. You're supposed to come from over there, but ta-da! I don't know, it's a husk? Goddess, have mercy. The okay, entire colony we did, must have been Okay, now we did do the creeper one already, and now we're doing the husk one. Okay. Where is everybody? I have a bad feeling about this. Ladies? After you. This is this is three buildings full of husks. We see some makos and hammerheads and cutscenes on Earth. <laughs> Imagine like three makes me cry. I have never I've replayed one several times and two a couple times. Um, but I've never played Mass Effect 3 again. It will be be interesting. I don't know if I'm emotionally ready. Hi. I'm not sure why they haven't figured out. sad one in a lot of ways like I I just emotionally don't know like, I would I think it's a great game and I would like honestly like, I think the game itself is really really good but I I just get very sad when I play it and not I mean it's like watching Earth fall and watching Thestia fall I don't know that one hit me really hard honestly Thessia hit me really hard, and I like I had to like stop playing for a bit. I had I didn't even get I was actually gonna play three with my renegade, um, but I ended up at the time I was playing through Steam. I have I had the games on Origins and on Steam. Um, but. I was playing on Steam and I could not get the DLC for two to work, which meant I didn't, I don't think I got the companions and I also couldn't get the, um, oh, what was it? Um, is that it? Oh yeah, I should have to clear it out really. Um, I couldn't get the Batarian mission to work the one that like where you you know you have to like blow up the planet essentially um to stop the reapers coming in early and and that 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 dlc is the one that explains you being like essentially under house arrest uh much more efficiently than like the than if you haven't played it because if you haven't played it if you haven't played that DLC, the game kind of comes up with a stupid reason for you to be under house arrest while also still trying to pretend like you blew something up, but you don't really know it. You don't really, you don't, you don't you're like, what? <laughs> you know? Um, so I, because the story continuity kind of messed, like, I didn't like the way that it was, it was handled without the DLC. I tried so I spent like two hours one day trying to get like all these different fixes that were apparently supposed to help the Steam version of the DLCs to work and I couldn't do it but now now I can do it because all the DLCs are just automatically integrated which is just so nice like with the legendary edition oh I don't have okay well that's fine this is what I get for bringing out just a bunch of biotics and beefy ladies. It's hard to ask the right questions of that unintentionally. You can ask. This is this is not a spoiler-free zone. 
I mean, also, like, if you're, you know, if you're really bored, you can watch it. You can watch it on YouTube. Um, it's all there on, on the old YouTubes. And I guess technically, the one on YouTube is technically not my very first one. Or no, no, the Mass Effect 3 one is, the Mass Effect 3 one is my very first one. It is, it is the official first time I ever played Mass Effect 3. But I didn't, at the time, I played Mass Effect 1 and 2, I didn't have any, I didn't have any recording stuff, it didn't even, hadn't, hadn't really crossed my mind, so. I could be wrong. I could be misremembering. Gross. Oh geez, this scared me for a second. I thought it was organic. I was like, what is that? Looks like a messed up Pokemon. So the walls here are pretty thin, and I do wonder what people think if they if they hear me. Just like, hopefully they think I, they, I'm, I, I'm essentially on a video call, I guess you could say. I was like, hopefully they think I'm on some kind of call. owes <laughs> I know when I when I played back a couple times and I did like my my original run or my original femship run and then my um, like, save game plus with her I was a soldier both times because I had heard that it was easier to do uh, like that it was, it was better to start out with soldier if you were new to Mass Effect and like new to shooters kind of a thing Pioneer team rarely consists of more than a few dozen specialists. It's clear that none of them have survived. The Cerberus group has a lot to answer for here. We got more more logs from Cerberus. Almost ten years since I almost broke my heart, stupid egg. I know we're all we're all in this together. It's been so long. Like, it's so crazy to think, real honestly. Like, how long it's been. Like, seven years. Almost. I think the seven year anniversary is coming up in November, but I'm not 100% sure. It either released in like February or November, I can't remember, but towards the end or the beginning of the year. But it changed my life. Like that game, like it's silly, it seems cliche to say, but it changed my life in a lot of ways. Cause I mean, before I had done YouTube, like I'd done my Mass Effect 3 playthrough, but it wasn't as like, uh, big. Like I did it, and it was when I was brand spanking new, you know. And I could, I did, I didn't expect much, really. You know, I was just excited when some people were started watching. Um, but Inquisition really is, you know, as small as it is, put me on the charts. I guess the teeny tiny charts, but put me on the charts. It's still to this day uh, Inquisition and my Dragon Age stuff in general, but especially Inquisition's my most popular stuff on YouTube. 
gets the most views on the daily. I think it helped to that Inquisition was relatively new. It had been out for like two months, so. And with that, we're going to end it here. So thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, especially as I kind of got rambly about other, you know, Mass Effect games and Dragon Age, uh, Bioware in general. So I appreciate you all for watching. Um, and this is the part of the video where I say thank you to my patrons. So I want to say thank you to Reese Scalito, who is a sapling tier patron and who I super duper appreciate. And I want to say thank you to Skellamonger, who is also a sapling tier patron over on Patreon and who is super duper awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to give an extra special shout out to Christopher, who is a tree tier sapling, tree tier <laughs> patron over on sapling. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's been a long day, and these walls are very thin, and I'm afraid everybody can hear me. So, um, thank you so much, Christopher. I truly appreciate it. And uh, thank you to my Acorn patron as well. <laughs> um, and anyway, that's it for the video. So, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.